What's going on YouTube, Justin Fuller, and today I am getting outside of a 2022 Honda Civic, and I wanna show you some of the tips and tricks that you might wanna know since you don't own this car for a year and then go, damn man, I didn't even know it could do that. So let's hop on in. All right guys, so this very first tip is gonna be related to your keyless entry setup. So right now the way the car is set up to where when I touch the door handle, it'll unlock just my driver's side. So it's not gonna unlock my back doors or my passenger side. So if it is raining, uh, my passengers, my friends, my family, my wife are gonna be super mad that I haven't let them in yet. What if I could set it up to where when I touch that door handle, it unlocks all the doors. Let me show you how to do that. All right guys, so let's show you how to set this up and I'm gonna be using all of these buttons right here. So the home button and then I'm gonna be toggling through to select with this one. So on here, I'm gonna jump into this menu and what I wanna come down here is I wanna get into my settings. So I'm gonna scroll through until I get to settings. Now I wanna select that. Now from settings, we're gonna jump into settings and we're gonna start scrolling around here. What we want is keyless access setup. Now when you get to keyless access setup, go ahead and jump into that. We want door unlock mode. If you select that right now, it's set up to just driver side door. Uh, if I change this, I can change it to all doors now. Whenever I touch the door handle, it'll automatically unlock every door in the car. All right guys, so if you're like me, chances are you're usually lugging around some sort of bag. I keep a laptop bag that has, you know, GoPros and a laptop and whatnot in it. So what I run into is this. We go ahead and we hop out of the car. And I get out and I start heading into the grocery store or wherever I'm going. I get all the way into the store. I'm halfway with my shopping and I go, oh my God. I don't remember if I locked my doors and I go to panic mode, right? Now, until I go out there and check and you know hear the alarm go off, I'm gonna wonder, did my doors lock? Well, what if you could set it up to where it'll automatically lock the doors the minute you get 10 feet from the car? Well, let me show you how to set that up. All right, guys, so here we are back and we're at the settings, right? So I wanna go ahead and select settings. Now, once I'm in settings, I'm gonna wanna scroll down and I am gonna keep on scrolling until I get to door setup. Now, when I select door setup, you're gonna see auto door lock, unlock, and I wanna scroll down until I see walk away auto lock. Now, when I get to walk away auto lock, the default is that this is turned off. I don't know why, it should really be on, but I'm gonna select on. Now, when it's on, the minute I get out of my car, if I have my keys with me, meaning they're not in the car, when I get 10 feet from the car, it'll automatically lock the doors of the car, so I don't have to worry about my belongings when I leave. So arguably one of the most controversial features that the Honda Civic has is related to the windows. Surprise me or not, if I press my window unlock button once and then twice and I hold it, what it will do is it'll start to roll my windows down. Now, this is a really cool feature if you live in a hot area, but what happens if it's raining? I could absolutely have these in my pocket, lay down on my couch to watch TV and accidentally roll these down and possibly ruin my car. Well, if you want to turn that feature off, let me show you how to do it. All right, guys, so here we are in the menu screen again, and I'm gonna jump into settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now, when I get into settings, I'm gonna wanna scroll down. So I'm gonna keep on coming on down until I hit the uh, door setup, right? Once I get to door setup, I wanna keep scrolling into this as well. So I'm gonna scroll past that, past that, and then I'm gonna get to keyless remote power window controls. If I select this, I can turn this feature off. Now, if I turn it off, I'll no longer be able to touch the locks once, chuck it and press and hold that second time and allow it to unlock the windows, or excuse me, roll the windows down and my sunroof if the car has one. All right guys, so you ever ride with someone who it just takes them a long time to get their stuff together before they exit the car? Well, the way Hondas are set up, none of the other doors will unlock until this door unlocks, right? The driver's side door. Well, what if you could change that to where when you put it in park, they unlock, or when you turn the car off, they all unlock so everyone else isn't fiddle around with buttons and knobs and doors trying to get things open to where they can get out of the car. Let me show you how to set that up. All right, so under the settings, we wanna of course jump in there. We want vehicle settings, right? Now from vehicle settings, we're gonna to toggle down. Now we wanna to get to that door setup, right? So door setup here. Now we already looked at auto door lock. We wanna to go to unlock. So under the unlock, you can see right now it's set up to where all doors uh, open when the driver's side door uh, opens, right? So it unlocks all those remaining doors. I have the option to change this when I shift to park, it'll unlock all the doors. Um, or when I turn the ignition off, it'll unlock every door in the car. So a couple of different options you can take advantage of, or you can completely turn this feature off if you want. You ever run out of gas? It happens. I've done it. I did it a couple years ago. I'm not ashamed to say it. It does happen. Well, on the Honda Civic, if you run out of gas, right, I would pop open my tab and then I would see this and go, well, if, if I'm using like a water bottle or something, how am I gonna hold this open and pour gas into it? That becomes an issue. Well, there's a solve for that. If you come around to the back and pop open your trunk and then get down in here underneath, you're gonna see your spare tire. Well, wouldn't you know it, there's a funnel in here 
that you can actually use in case you run out of gas to be able to hold this open to where you could pour gas in using whatever instrument, you know, whether it be a Ziploc bag, a water bottle, a Gatorade bottle, whatever you can find to be able to pour gas into your car. All right, guys, so this next couple tricks or tips is gonna pertain to specifically your touchscreen and Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now I'm using a Google Pixel, but these will work on both, right? So let's hop over to the screen and show you a couple things. All right, guys, so here we are and I have, you know, my Android Auto pulled up uh, and I'm simply just on the homepage, right? So there's a couple things you'll probably notice. One, I've got a custom background. It's very easy to set up. And then two, I want you to know that you can rearrange all these different icons. So when it comes to the icons, all you've got to do is press and hold on one of the icons. It's then going to tell you to un unlock your phone and hop into the app, right? So it's going to automatically do this for you and you're going to see this screen pull up. Now from here, I can start moving stuff around. So if I wanted to move some items around over here on the side, I can grab them and move them to where I want. So know that you can customize these. Now, for it to take place though, I am gonna have to unplug this, replug it back in, and then it will reconnect up so that it'll register those new changes that I've made. So that's if you wanna move any of these icons around, right? Very easy to do, but I just want you to know that you can do it in case you wanna keep those top ones that you use regularly up. Now, secondarily, I have a, a custom background here, and I wanna show you how to do that. It's pretty easy, guys. If you scroll down here, you've actually got a settings tab that you can go to. Now, under this setting tabs, you can scroll on down here, and you'll see I just actually passed it, choose wallpaper. There are all kinds of different wallpapers in here that you can pick from. They just come standard uh, with the vehicle, right? So once I've done that, now I can go ahead and jump back. I'm gonna jump back again, and boom, I now have a custom wallpaper back there as well. So here's a pretty cool one that you might not have known about. You can add in shortcuts to like people that you call regularly, right? Very easy to do, but if you didn't know how to do it, one, you need to be able to do it, and then maybe I wanna move it up to the top versus it being down here further in the screen. Well, the question is, how do I do that? Well, what you're gonna wanna do is come to the very bottom here, and at the very bottom, there'll be a button that says customize. I'm gonna select that button. Now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna launch your app, right? And on the app launcher, I wanna do add a shortcut. And then I can select call a contact or add assistant action. So for the sake of this, I would select call a contact. From there, I could select my contact that I wanna add and then I'll add them, right? After I've chosen that person, I'll then come back to this screen and then I can move them, right? So I have this slid all the way to the top, but I can move this around. So if I wanted this to be third down, I can do that and it's gonna ask me, hey, for the changes to take place, I would need to restart it, right? So I would need to unplug and plug back in. Now, once I've done that, it'll reconnect up to my car. Once it's done so, It'll pull up uh, my home screen here. I'll jump to it, and now you can see I've moved it from here over to here. So while we're on the topic of shortcuts, what if you could set one up to where it's right here and it'll automatically start directing me to my home, for example. You can set up your assistant to do lots of different actions. I'm gonna jump in here, I'm gonna go to the very bottom to customize, right? I'm gonna select customize. Now from there, it's gonna ask me to open my phone up. Now under my phone, I wanna select that add a shortcut. Now instead of call a contact, I wanna go to an assistant action. Now they give you some examples down here and I just put in directions uh, home, right? And then from there, I select how I wanna do it, right? So I selected Google Maps for this instance. Now you can test the command when you do to make sure it works. And then once you've done that, hit create a shortcut. Now, once you've created that shortcut, it's gonna produce it over here. And then you can select where you want it to live on this. Now, once you've done so, you're gonna need to unconnect and reconnect so that it'll line up wherever you want this to land in your assortment of different apps and shortcuts. After you've done that, Boom, you can now touch that shortcut and it'll start launching Your to whatever you've asked the assistant to do. All right guys, so here's a fun one if you live in a cold climate area. Chances are that you've run into this where you get ice and everything gets stuck and you can't get this to open. Now this is connected to your door locks. So you should be able to just simply unlock your door, right? Unlock my door and press on and open. But what if it just won't pop open? How can I get this to open? Well, let me show you. If you come around over here to the trunk, I'm gonna pop the trunk open and there's actually a tab in here. It's up in the corner if you can see it. So there's a wire right here that runs to that that you can pull. Once you've pulled that, it should pop this open in case it's stuck. Have you ever killed your car battery? It happens, man. You leave a dome light on, you do a lot of weird things. Well, if chances are you have, then you walk up and of course you can't use the door locks. I can't use this because I can't get it unlocked, right? So I have to be able to get in the car. The question is, how do I get in the car? And even worse, if I have belongings in the trunk, how on earth am I gonna get to them? because I don't have a way to get through there. Well, let me show you. Actually on here, first off, I'll point out that on your keys, you've got a little tab here that you can push and this will slide out an actual key for your car. Now, if you need to get in the doors because first off, your door locks aren't working because the battery's dead, underneath in here, there's actually a place that you can put your key. So you can put your key into that to open it. Now, once you've done that, that'll get you in one door. Now, when it comes to the other doors, you would have to reach back here to your next one to open it, right? So I gotta come on back here 
and pull on this door handle till I pop this door open. <clears throat> now I've gotten a secondary door open, right? But I still have belongings in the trunk. How do I get them? Because these are connected to the door locks as well. So in the back, there is a small little panel right here. Now you'll want to get into this panel. You can use that same key that you had to get in there. If you stick it down in there, it's going to give you the ability to pop that panel up. All right, so once you get that panel popped up, you'll notice that there's a pull tab in here. I can pull that tab and when I do, my trunk just popped open to where now I'd be able to get my belongings out if the car battery had died. All right, are you outdoorsy? If not, then you'd probably skip this tip and just jump on to the next one because it's not really gonna apply to you. So the question becomes, hey man, if I'm going out and I'm gonna do something, right? I'm gonna be around water or somewhere where I'm concerned about my key getting wet and not working, right? Because this is about 300, 400 bucks, right? So I don't want to risk that. But I want to be able to lock this piece in and just take this so I can still get in the doors to get all our belongings, get to this so we can start the car up. But if this is in the car right now, the car is always going to be unlocked. So let me show you how you can sit up to where you could leave this inside the car, take this with you in case you're floating the river or going doing whatever you're doing, and still be able to lock the doors. All right, guys, so here we are at the settings button, right? So I'm going to go ahead and jump into settings. Now, when I get into settings, I want to go to door setup again. Now, when I get into the door setup, I'm gonna scroll down a few different options here. It's gonna be pretty easy to recognize lockout prevention. Currently, this is on, meaning that I cannot lock the doors with the key in the car, right? So if that's a concern, I would highly recommend leaving this on. But if you get out to the river and maybe you just wanna turn this off this one time, go ahead, turn it off. Now I can leave the actual key fob part in the car, right? And then I can just take that key with me. Right, so I can get it back into the car. Then once I get back in, I'll have my fob. I can go ahead and crank up the car and we're good to go. So if you're like me, when you start driving, I don't really want a lot going on that I'm looking at when I look down to see my speed, right? So if I flip this around, I don't need a whole lot going on. Maybe I need the tack, maybe I don't. And then there's this other light, this fuel efficiency light that comes on the lights of green when I'm driving in a positive way that affects my fuel efficiency and it drops out to white. Maybe I don't want all these things on. So let me show you how to turn those things on and off. All right, so here we are at settings again, right? So I'm gonna jump into settings. Now, when I'm in the settings, I wanna scroll on down to meter setup. Now, under meter setup, I'm gonna be able to affect both, not only changing my tachometer, but also that fuel efficiency backlight. So if I keep scrolling on down here, eventually I'm gonna see the fuel efficiency backlight. So from here, I can turn that off to where it won't light up green and white if that's distracting to you. So that's where one of your features is. So I'm gonna back out of that. Now, from there, I can keep scrolling down again and I can come to my tachometer. Now, when I get to my tachometer, same thing. I can turn the tachometer off. So this way, when I jump back out of this screen, I won't have to see that gauge there when I'm driving around. It'll just be a nice, clean, plain setup. Do you speed? Do you drive fast? Eh, at some point we all do, right? So I find myself listening to, to, to quick music and then I get going and I'm speeding. Well, sometimes I'm in areas that I don't necessarily know that well and I don't know what the speed limit is. Eh, it'd be nice to get some sort of alert that lets me know what the speed limit is and if I'm exceeding it. So you can actually do that on the Honda Civic and I'm gonna show you how. All right, so here we are at the settings menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now under settings, I wanna go down to driver assisted system setup. Now from here, I wanna scroll almost to the very bottom of this. Now the first one you're gonna see is traffic sign recognition system. That's already on for me, but I wanna go to traffic sign recognition system exceeding speed warning. Now, if I turn this feature on, which I've already done, now whenever I exceed what the speed limit is designated off of what it picks up, use that camera up there to find those signs, It'll give me an alert and throw it up in the dash to let me know I'm exceeding that speed limit so I don't get myself in trouble with the law. You ever been driving your Honda Civic and you get that warning alert when you're, it's looking like you're gonna hit somebody in front of you? Well, sometimes it picks up stuff that maybe it's a car turning in and it picks it up. Now, what I'm describing is forward collision warning. Now, if you don't know what forward collision warning is, it uses the camera and a radar down in the grid to detect cars in front of it and bounce it off. So if it's looking like you're gonna hit a car, it'll give you an alert and they can actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. Well, sometimes you can find that it's a little bit too touchy and maybe you want to shorten that distance up uh, so that it doesn't go off as much. Let me show you how to do that. So to make changes to that setting, we're going to jump into settings, right? Now, once we're under settings, we're going to scroll down. We want to go into the driver assist system setup. Now in here, you're actually going to have a lot of options, right? So a lot of the different features related to Honda sensing, uh, you can adjust. But for this one, we want to go into forward collision warning distance. Now, once you're in the distance, you have normal, which is the default, a short and uh, a long, right? So three different options. So if I wanted to shorten that distance up, it would mean that it'll it'll allow my car to get closer to cars, right? Shorten the distance before it alerts me. Or if I'm not comfortable with that, I could make it as long as possible, right? So know that you can make that adjustment in here. Do you know what road departure mitigation is? 
That's a fancy way of saying there are sensors to detect when you start to leave the side of the road in a Honda that'll give you an audible alert and shake the wheel. Well, sometimes you can find that, hey man, maybe it's a little bit too sensitive for you and you're like, man, I didn't even get off the side of the road and it started freaking out and it scared me. Well, what if I told you you can adjust that term and distance that it'll start picking up and alert you? Let me show you how to do that. All right, so we're gonna jump into the settings and then we are gonna scroll down to driver assisted system setup. Now, instead of going to forward collision warning, we wanna go down one, two, until we get to road departure mitigation settings. Now from here, it is currently set at normal. I can of course make it wider, which would give you a little bit more leniency so it's not going off as often. Uh, or I can set it to just do the warning if I don't want it to vibrate the wheel. So now that you have a couple different options you can change it to, and then of course, I can make it more narrow if I feel like it's just not quite alerting me soon enough. All right guys, there it is. So we made it through, what is that? 14, 15 different tips and tricks uh, that you can use on the Honda Civic. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll hit that like button for me so it'll push this further up that algorithm so that more people will see the video uh, and I can continue to make these, right? Uh, I hope you'll leave a comment. Did I miss something that you feel like uh, there was a tip or trick that you knew? Um, or do you have questions about a tip or trick? Throw it in the comments. I'm usually checking out things and I will answer them if I see them. Uh, all my contact info is always in the description if you want to directly reach out to me. Uh, other than that, I hope you will subscribe to the channel, man. Let me tell you about Hondas. Let me tell you about tips and tricks. Let me show you comparisons of vehicles, much like the Civic, to other vehicles out there. Because uh, that's what I do in my reviews. Uh, outside of that, I just want to say thank you again for watching. I uh, hope you'll check out some of my other videos. A reminder, I do have a secondary channel, which I'll throw a link up to uh, at the end also, so that if you ever want to hop over to that channel and check out some of the new stuff that I'm doing, I hope that you will. Other than that, uh, let's like, subscribe, share, all of the things. Later, guys!